Hi Riaz, good morning. Glad to have you here in South Africa and in Johannesburg putting up your installation of the fourth world. Possibly the first statues of Ambedkar on the African continent. So I just wanted to talk to you about this. Uh, so a set of questions, uh, why B.R. Ambedkar, why South Africa and why the title fourth world? Yeah, I think uh, uh, you know, the thought of having uh, Ambedkar in the cradle of humankind uh, was, you know, an ambition, you know, according to me. I mean, and uh, uh, the opportunities which I got to kind of uh, encounter with the history of, uh, you know, South Africa has always prompted me to kind of think differently from the way people normally think in relationship with Indian icons and you know African history, apartheid and other things. So I thought, you know, there's a very strong relationship between, you know, Ambedkar and uh, you know Mandela in in the context of uh, history and you know the, what both of them stood for. So the moment I got an opportunity to do a residency here, you know, with the support of uh, Wits University and uh, also with Benji. You know, the, person who heads this center, I, you know, immediately started um, taking my opportunity to kind of sit back, relax and think. I actually didn't do anything much I mean, when I came in September in 2018. And, but after 10 days, I decided to paint a portrait of uh, Ambedkar because that was my contemplation, you know, uh, for 10 days that time. So, so I thought, you know, Ambedkar in South Africa, especially in the cradle of humankind, is very symbolic. In today's political context, especially, you know, though the work is uh, here, I'm sure it will have a resonance elsewhere. I mean, especially in an Indian context. I mean, that's also one of my conversations I'm interested in. And the idea of titling it Fourth World emerged along with one of my solo shows, which I did in 2018, in uh, February, where I titled the exhibition Holy Shiver, which, you know, is a response. The entire exhibition was a response to what is happening in Indian context, where a lot of discriminatory politics, there's a lot of polarization, a lot of uh, you know, violence against uh, you know, the marginalized and the minorities. At the same time, you know, the issues of lynching, the way it has come back, you know, almost like I'm in a very primitive way and uh, you know, it reminds you of the violences which occurred at the time of huge caste discriminations, also at the time of Ambedkar. And, you know, so I started thinking, you know, all around that and I did few projects which addressed the issue of lynching historically happened. But Ambedkar came into play in that show as a person who triggers the discourse again around Indian constitution. As being the father of Indian constitution, I thought constitution is under threat in India, which is also the biggest debate and you know, many scholars, thinkers, philosophers, even youngsters, people on the street who understands the value of Indian constitution and its, its roots and its branches, I mean in every sense, I mean the way it is spread. So I think Ambedkar's contribution is huge because he suffered and he found solutions in the Indian constitution to solve them. So I thought maybe having Ambedkar in the Holy Shiva project was very key as somebody triggers a discourse even with Gandhi again in 2018. So that's why I did a painting also called Dhamma Swaraj hmm. where you know Gandhian or you know Ambedkar right discourses comes back into the project. So fourth world is also kind of an imaginative space where you know we all need to kind of dream of. I mean you know because I don't consider the hierarchy of the fourth, fourth world which is a very dismissive space. I think the fourth world is like I mean, an everybody's space, you know. So that's Ambedkar stood for. I mean, he stood for the you know the poor. I mean, he stood for people who are untouchable. I mean, even coming from Kerala, you know, 150 years ago, what kind of history we went through, you know. So there's possibility of transformation. Kerala is a big example okay. in that sense. So there's a belief that I always carried as an artist since the days I came to Bombay in '92 that social action has power. 
and Ambedkar believed in that. I mean, he also believed in that. I mean, you know, the, the social equality is so important to trigger any kind of discourse. So, I think, yeah, Ambedkar in Africa has that, you know, symbolic power to start or, you know, emancipate a discourse. Yeah. No, thank you. I mean, I think uh, what you're suggesting is very important, the possibility of conversations across spaces. The fact that Africa and India have been in dialogue, you're putting the statue of Ambedkar up in the cradle of humankind also brings up the idea of the Adivasi, the original inhabitant, ancient connections. It also brings up the history of constitution, violence in everyday life, questions of justice. It brings Gandhi and Ambedkar into conversation, brings Gandhi, Ambedkar and Mandela into conversation, questions of apartheid and race. So I think it's uh, a brilliant point from which one can begin to think about future conversations. But I'd also like to ask you about the sculpture in particular. So I'll just zoom back a bit so that people can see. Um, Right, so there are these four plinths yep. and two statues which are pointing off Ambedkar, pointing in two different directions. Mm -hmm. So could you speak to us a bit about the, the factuality of this? Why these four plinths, yeah. why they are at different heights? Why is it that Ambedkar is pointing specifically or is it otherwise to the directions east and west? Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, that's the power of uh, conversation, actually, you know, when we started, uh, you know, uh, thinking about this particular exhibition, which has got some of the, you know, great, uh, you know, artists uh, involved in this, uh, the one thing which I've been kind of very keen to have a very inclusive conversation possibility, which is, you know, even from a personal capacity, I've been kind of, uh, you know, interested in, you know, doing that. So, I think. Uh, Whenever you read Ambedkar, whenever you try to understand him, I mean, he had a very, you know, a prophetical approach to kind of the possibilities of it. I mean, he was not just, you know, the way people consider him as a kind of a, you know, the leader of the Achyut or, you know, the leader of the Dalits and, or, you know, the leader of the untouchable. I think he was a great philosopher. I mean, you know, he was a great thinker. I mean, you know, he was a great economist. He understood the world. I mean, you know, his thesis was about you know 200 years of India's you know economic structure. I mean, when he was when what he submitted or you know what he was doing in the London School of Economics. But we denied him because of the social hierarchy even existed at the time of discourses in the era of Indian independence struggle. You know, so Ambedkar was always an outcast. I mean, you know. You know, there's a point, I mean, you know, where Gandhi says that about you know, Indian constitution making, that uh, you have to do the first round of discussion with this man called Ambedkar who understands India much better and understands the law and the social implication of a social order. You have to first consult him if you want to kind of say, it's a great understanding. I mean, that is the power of discourse. You know, that's the power of understanding about one's skill and knowledge. I think we should be doing that. I mean, these four directions which has been suggested here is that, I mean, you know, it's the power of conversation, I mean, the power of a site, power of a site which you create to kind of sit and have discourses. It's so important in today's time where you, you know, consistently talk about, you know, the ideas of, you know, alienating people from one another. I always feel, I mean, the problem is that, I mean, you're actually, first of all, not ready to understand the situation and discuss it about. Then you find solutions to kind of move on. I mean, it's not like when I mean, you just run away from it. So, my proposal is also to kind of sit together, you know, have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So, four directions are very important in that sense. Four hierarchies are very important in that. So, you, you also see, like, I mean, there are four hierarchies, you know, where Ambedkar is standing, or four levels of plinth. Different yeah. plinths. So, that's a very suggestive thing which I could do. I mean, mm. you know, and understanding this landscape also for um, the proximity of this landscape also with the crack I mean, also with the stuck fountain caves which is you know considered you know very you know, important and I think there is a resonating effect to that and I the, after I installed this work I felt next day morning I felt this was here I mean I didn't feel that I installed it here so I'm just you know maybe a tool to kind of have Ambedkar here, but I'm just continuing this course which happens 
all across. I mean, also, I realize that I mean, in India there is a you know, resurgence of you know, Ambedkar's thoughts. It is because this new generation has understood the importance of education and there's only one way to fight back now. Mm -hmm. What is happening in India today and there is this man has shown us that I mean he has predicted many things He has prophetically said that you know the, the association the way Indian politics if it gets married with religion It will move to dictatorship and we are seeing that I mean, it was so prophetical according to me So you see that all across the world. So for me, I mean in all these four directions simply means Let's discuss. I mean, let's let's have better conversations. Let's share our knowledge. Yeah. You know, let's share, think about better possibilities. And for me, it's also interesting. Uh, if one looks at the sculpture, that the four plinths are at different levels. Uh, the kind of hark back to the idea of varna and the fourfold classification of society. The untouchable is always the excluded. Yeah. And here you have a um, Maidkar standing on top of these plinths, so he is included in a different manner. He's included in a way in which he directs our conversation. And I think that the statues of Ambedkar, which always have him pointing to some distant place, a distant time, yeah. another conversation are crucial for this. Because what this sculpture or installation for me represents is also the thinking out of that fourfold classification. What would it mean to look out of it? So thank you so much, Riaz, and we'll continue this conversation uh, later. Yeah. But thank you so much for introducing us to this. And here we are at the Nyrox Foundation. Mm -hmm. This is the Nyrox Sculpture Park. And today there's going to be a series of events. And uh, the statue or the inst of Ambedkar and the installation Fourth World will be inaugurated uh, today. So here we are at the first, we are probably the first viewers of this on the Indian subcontinent. So thank you and we'll get have a longer interview with Riyas soon. Thanks.